Let us pray. Father, we thank you that it is today that you have always been our God and that you are going to continue to be our God. Lord, from the, uh, from the highest mountain to the lowest valley, you've been blessing us. And in this Advent season, God, we just ask that you would just touch us and bless every last one of us. You know what we're up against and you know what is all around us. But give us the peace. Give us the peace of John when he was on the Isle of Patmos. And he said that although there's trouble over around me, but I'm not troubled. We thank you, God. Bless us now as we enter into our services. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So Tommy Henry is going to come to us at this time.
And not only that, but for him to hear us and for him to answer our prayers. And we do know that the answer to prayer is yes, no, and wait. Amen. So God is so good. Amen. Amen. One of the uh, uh, requests that we have that is for the city, amen, one of our uh, great teachers uh, in this community has fallen and he in the person of Dr. Willard Hines and he's being eulogized today. He uh, was a music teacher plus and then not only that, but he did much for our community from grade school to those who are graduating from college or whatever. He did much. We thank God for him. Amen. Brother Clint Cover is going to come to us after the press song. Amen. Lord, 
we praise you for how you blessed and that you've uh, uh, been with Amia, Father. You've blessed the Zyre family, Father. We pray that you continue to do so. We expect your hand of mercy, your hand of healing to flow, Father. And Lord, as we come before you, Father, we come, Lord, right now, just glorifying your name, thanking you for life and that more abundantly, Father. We thank you for the word, Lord, that we're going to hear, Father. We thank you that even now, Father, that it will touch our lives and that it will make us, Lord, what you would have us to be, Father. We come praying by Father and incident and, and interceding, Father, for the world, Father, for those, Lord, that are on the mission field, preaching your word, Father. Those, Lord, that are in other countries, Father, dealing with this pandemic, Father. Those that are dealing with it here and fighting with it here in these United States of America. Help us, Lord, as a country, Lord, to come together, to get on one accord, Father, that we, Lord, would follow the direction, Lord, of the leader of our country, Father, that we would do the things that would protect all of us, that we would not be selfish in our decisions, Father, but that we would be unified, that we would walk in love and not in hate, that we walk in peace, Lord, and not in war, Father, that we walk in unity and not in division, Father. We thank you, Father, for being with us in this time. We look forward to go to a time when this virus is gone and just, uh, it is defeated and it is removed off the face of this planet. And we anticipate that even now, Father. We thank you and we praise you. We'll forever, Lord, give you all the praise, honor, and glory. We ask you to grant this in your precious, wonderful Son, Jesus' name, and that you bless the furtherance of the service, that there be anointed upon the speaker, that the word will go out in power, and that we'll go out, Father, in humility and grace. And that we'll accomplish your purpose. We ask you to grant these things to your son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, given it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. As men give unto your bosom. We thank God. Thank God for the word of God and for all of those who have given and everyone, anyone else who would like to give. Giving is a part of life, believe it or not. And I'm so glad that God gave his son in order that he might die and so that we can have a right to the tree of life. We thank God. We're coming again with another song by Sister Henry. And after that, we're going to have a message from God.
God has really, really done that for every last one of us. And I really appreciate that. Amen. Amen. We thank God. That is for everybody that's here today, everybody that's helping. We appreciate you for all that you're doing. Amen. I want to talk today, and uh, it won't take me long, on walking in God's timing, His timing. The Bible talks about waiting, waiting, and waiting deals with what? Time. It deals with time. Amen. Amen. It had not been long ago, and uh, it was right before Thanksgiving, matter of fact, a day or two before Thanksgiving. And I came out of my uh, apartment door that is leading on the outside. And as I looked down, there was a lot of luggage and suitcases that was there, you understand? And I looked to the right, and there was a tall uh, Pakistanian that was standing there. And so I went around the luggage, and uh, uh, while I was on my way to my vehicle, I asked him, I said, well, are we going away for Thanksgiving or what? And he said this, he said, no, what happened was this. He said, I went to Wayne County, and I actually was going uh, on my way to Pakistan. And what happened was, I test a uh, negative that is at Wayne County Airport. But when I got to Boston, they gave me a random test, and I test positive. So they told me to get everything that I own, anything with my name on it, I had to bring him back home. And of course, he had a lot of things to it that he was carrying over to his family and his earthly ties, believe it or not. But he said that not only did they tell me that I had to take everything back, but I had to get another plane ticket that is to come back home. But it said, here's the kicker. My wife was with me. And she, while I tested negative, she tested positive. And we got together and decided to let her, that is, go on, you understand. But the thing about it is, and this is what I never did could uh, understand about the whole thing, and that is, I believe that they forecast that is the uh, traveling warning that says for everybody not to travel. That is during the holidays. But he decided to travel, of course, you know what I mean, on his own, you understand. But in reality, that was not the time to do what? To travel. His time was off. It was way, way off. And it caused him a vain problem, believe it or not, you understand. Now, timing is very important. Believe it or not, time is very, this is the uh, Advent season, and uh, you can see the Christmas lights over everywhere. This is not the 4th of July, you understand, whereby you hang your flag out on the grass and all of that. Because we need to learn that timing and what day it is and what time it is, yeah, even for us, is very, very important. Amen. The ecclesiastical story is told, and as it is told, it says that there is a time a season and a purpose for everything under the sun. And you know I believe that without a shadow of a doubt. And as we talk about, as we talk and as we deal with timing, I think about sports and I think about uh, the professional quarterback that throws the ball to the runner, the receiver. Now, both has to have timing. Believe it or not, I think about the professional that is baseball player who's trying to blow that fastball uh, about a battle. All of that has to do with timing. What about flying an airplane, taking it up in the air, and not only that, but sitting it down, setting it down again, you understand? All of that has to do with timing. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Do you like somebody? Or do you, is it about to enter into love? You understand? Your timing is very important when you tell somebody, I love you. It's really, really very important. Your timing for your engagement and your wedding is very important. Your timing for negotiating a deal. All of this, believe it or not, is very, very important, you understand? And if we ask what time it is now, this is the Advent season and everybody knows, should know about the full crater, you understand, and not the tomb of the grave that he died in. We're talking about his birth. You, you, you got to know what time that is. Is it, There's a timing, 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 you understand? And timing is so very, very important. Well, oftentimes, amen, when we are uh, overlook the idea the same is true when it comes down with the relationship with God. 
Amen. It's not that there is a, 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 a you getting saved is a time and issue. We're not talking about that. But what happens when you do get saved? God unfolds a plan for your life. Amen. And to reject that plan and to reject uh, what God is giving is to reject the best thing that's going to happen in your life. Amen. And you will never enjoy life, the life that God intended for you to enjoy, to enjoy until you walk in his timing. You will never have what God intended you, intended for you to have until you notice and walk in his timing. Timing is very important. Timing is very, very important. How many people you know who would not admit that is living with somebody under one roof and they're saying to themselves, you know what? I wish I had done what? I'm not going to say. You just figure out who it is. Fill in the blank. Fill in the blank. Amen. Am I right? You see, you see, his plan and his timing, amen, goes together. Am I right? You see, he's very clear. You understand, in his timing and planning, you understand, he reveals it to you step by step, day by day. You understand, sometimes one hour and one minute at a time. Am I right? You see, and, and, and you know that, that there are people who they, are, they never will consider that God has a plan and has a time in their life when he wants to do certain things. Amen. They go to school. Oh yeah, they get a master's degree, and not only that, they get hours above the master's and degrees above the master's, and they choose what line of work they want to work in. But not what what was God's purpose and plan for your life, and where I am at this point, you understand? This is what we need to act and to ignore God's plan and God's timing. Amen. You see, if you're not living out, if you're not living out His plan, you live in in a very dangerous era. This disaster. It really, really is the that disaster. One of the worst things in my life that I sit down and think about sometimes as I read back and remember this is when I say, I wish I had done this. And you've done the same thing. You understand? That's because you wasn't walking in God's time. You understand? You see? And there's a lot of people who are miserable these days. You understand? And I've met people who are unhappy. Amen. And they can't even tell you why. You understand? And that's why folk. How can I say get on drugs and alcohol and all of this stuff? Because they're trying to figure it out uh, their life for themselves. They're tired. They're tired, believe it or not. And they try everything. They try finance. They try sex. They try uh, uh, the business world and finance and all of that stuff. You understand? You see? But there's still an empty void. And, that, and no matter what they do, they cannot fill that void up because God's plan cannot be filled with any kind of home remedy and homemade ideas. I'm sorry. You better look at your timing and what you do. You understand? you 75 years old and, 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 and your wife is passing. You could still claim and you are what they call them sugar daddies. You better look at your timing and you better look at what's going on that is around you. The timing of God. You got to look at that as we think about, amen, our lives and our relationship with him. So we go to David. David, David, David in the Bible, he talks about timing a whole lot. Timing, and not only that, he talks about waiting. And there's a whole lot of passages whereby David talked about waiting. Amen. Because he was living according to God's time and God's schedule. Can I ask y'all a question just Paul? Where is God in your schedule? Where is he? And for many people, he is nowhere to be found. He's nowhere to be found. Have you ever stopped and asked God, said, what do you think and what do you want that is uh, uh, maybe for me to do? What is my plan for you today? What is my plan for, for your life? You understand? What is my plan? You understand? You understand? You see, the, the wisest thing that you can do is to wake up in the morning, amen, and get connected with God the Father, oh my. Amen. This is his intention. Amen. You see, you got to get up and you got to thank him. You got to say, God, I don't know what's going to happen on the day. You understand? But you go ahead of me. You bless me. You understand? But I'm going to do what? I'm going to walk in your time. I'm going to do what's best for my life. God's timing. I declare God got timing for us. Amen. Everybody's going to get married when they're 18. 
Hope you all like my wife. She ain't married. Wife. She's living on God's time. Amen. And if God tells her to get married when she's 92 years old, that's not your business. That's God's time. I actually believe that. Some folks look. I actually believe that God has a time that is for everything. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, see, I don't want to run ahead of God. And then again, I don't want to linger behind too much to see. I, I, I don't want to step out of God's will because, you see, I, I want to walk wisely in his will. You understand? It wouldn't with the days before, but I can thank him, you understand, that he has allowed me to walk what wise and walk, walk worthy in his timing. Because his timing is so important. Amen. People all, all over the world. They live disconnected. That is from God. You understand? Until something tragic happens. You ever notice how holy people get when something tra tragic happens? You ever notice that? You ever notice how holy they are every day and something happens you can't even hear from them? You understand? You call them on their phone, you can't get it. Have a blessed day. And then one thing can happen. And you're going to have to say, well, what happened to that spiritual mouth that they had? Lord, oh, yeah, you wonder what's, what's going on? You see, we can't live disconnected from God uh, when something tragic they happen. Amen. And sometimes we have to do what? We got to turn to God. You understand? You got to turn to God. But don't just go running to Him when something tragically happened. You understand? You see, that's not being a Christian. That's living desperately, if you ask me. So now I want you to do what? Listen carefully. Because doing what? Timing is very, very important. Timing is very important. You can't walk the street with a mink coat on in the summertime and it's 95 degrees. Your timing is off. Not when you put on a bikini when it's 20 below in Detroit. Your timing is off. Amen. You have to walk. And you have to know about time. About time. Lord have mercy. Because this timing is important in relationship. You understand. You see, presently and the future timing is important. You understand. When you get ready to purchase something, timing is important. I've messed up on that many times. Oh, but I learned though. I've learned over and over again. You see, now waiting on the Lord, waiting on the Lord is a very vital plan. Believe it or not, it's a very vital principle also to every single Christian. Amen. What is God doing? What is God doing? That is why you are waiting. What is he doing? What is God doing? I'm waiting, but what in the world is God doing? As David said, you understand, you see, if you live your life by simply moving without consulting God, you understand, because God has your timing and your plan in his hand. Amen. You see, how many of y'all know what I'm talking about? It means that there are some things that are in the plan that God hasn't provided yet. He's holding it for some reason. And beloved, you have to wait on it, believe it or not. There are some things he has available for you right now, but there's something that you just got to wait on. You just got to wait. That's all it is to it. And oh, how I was taught that. Oh, how I was taught that during this season. You are going to have to wait. I'm sorry. And God is not going to. Because you're living. You're living in God's time. Amen. And learn to walk in his time. And you see, what you think you need right now, God will cause you to wait on. You want it now. You want it now. You want it now so bad till you get on a plane and fly to where in order to get it. Believe it or not. But God is saying wait. Amen. He gives you and if you wait, guess what he's going to do? He's going to give you something better. Amen. If you're willing to wait. So now, if you're always ready at the now, I got to have it now. You understand? I got to have it now. You better be real careful. You can miss some of the very best things that God has for you. Now, Waiting upon the Lord is not an easy thing to do, you understand. But his plan and his timing is perfect. And wise men and women, they wait, they wait. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Waiting on the Lord doesn't mean that uh, you just stand there and do nothing. Am I right? God may have you to do, uh, be very, very active. 
in what you are doing, you understand, wherever you're doing it. And, and then waiting on God is an active stillness. How you gonna wait on God? You understand? My house burned down, I lost everything. I had two cars and I won't do so, but I ain't gonna preach for the next two months. Lord have mercy. How many of y'all, how y'all know what I'm talking about? It's an active stillness. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. To be doing I'm mean, to be doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on the next step. You understand? I'm wise enough to wait. Waiting is hard. Amen. And I can accomplish whatever God wants me to accomplish if I wait. Whatever, whenever I wait, what is for me, I'm going to get that. Whatever God has for me, it is for me. He stored it up for me. So don't get ahead of God and don't cut yourself. Don't cut God out of your life. Don't do that. Because you can wait on God if you just listen to him. Amen. You know, some folks say, well, I wait. I waited and well, uh, I really, really waited and nothing happened, you understand. I waited and nothing happened. Well, you waited, but to be honest about it, you see, you waited with a rebellious attitude. You had a rebellious attitude. You were waiting, but every day of your life, guess what you were saying? I don't know, what, what, what is God doing? You understand? What is God doing? I'm ready, you understand? I'm getting nervous and all of this. You had a rebellious attitude. Amen. And it's not your timing because God only knows. Amen. Uh, uh, God only, God knows you is what I'm trying to say. And he's not ready to bless you at this particular time. You understand? If you could just know what God's timing really is, it's a wonderful thing. You understand? There's certain blessings you got to wait on ministry. You got to wait on in your life. You see, he knows the danger that you face. In this world and, and, and moving too fast. He knows about all of that. So you be real careful and you wait on God. And oftentimes, when we uh, uh, when God says wait, he's saying simply saying, not yet, not now. Amen. That's what he's saying. Amen. You see, because to have it now will be a disaster, believe it or not. You see, you won't be able to handle it. Too much pride will come in. You understand? Not only that, there will be a jealous spirit will be your portion. And God says, you're not ready for that right now. You see, have you ever asked God for anything? Have you ever asked God, what is that? Uh, 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 what is it? I don't know. What is it you want me to do? And God kept all of that a secret and would not tell you. God is going to tell you. You understand? Now, waiting, 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 waiting. Waiting is something that we all have to do. We have to wait and understand. He's waiting to direct you. He's waiting to bless you, believe it or not. Because he knows, amen, that when you are willing to accept his answer to the prayer that you've given to him, then you can move on. Now, God loves all of his children. He knows all of us, you understand? But the problem is we can't wait until God's best come along. We're always going to agree and we're going to take that is the second best. God can give you something new and that shines, but you would rather go to the uh, uh, a trash pile and get something and wash it up and shine it up instead of having God's best. Because God's best is waiting for every last one of us, believe it or not. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, don't get impatient. I've been waiting till, I've been waiting 10 years. You may have to wait 10 more years. You understand? But walk in God's timing. Because his timing is very, very important. So the psalmist said in, in, in Psalm 37, three times, he said, fret not thyself of evil doers. We look around sometimes and we say, you know, this person uh, been on the job 10 years and he has way more than I have. I've been on the job 30 years. Fret not yourself. You understand? Well, he has a Lamborghini. You don't know how he got it. Could have been selling dope again. Fret not yourself. Don't look around and say, God, you know, you need to speed it up. Because look at, look at what everybody's doing. Look what they got. You understand? Don't do God that way. You understand? But the psalmist said, he said that we can rest. He said, he said, rest in the Lord and wait patiently 
on the end. You got to wait patiently for him. David said, I waited patiently uh, for the Lord, and he inclined his ear. Am I right? He did all of that. Heard me. Picked me up out of the muck and miry clay. Placed my feet on solid ground, and then he put a song he said in my mouth. You understand? Waiting is not easy. All right. It's not easy. Believe it or not. You see? You see? He said, fret not yourself of evil doers, you understand? Because they will soon be what? Cut off. Amen. But they that wait on the Lord shall inherit that is the earth. You understand? If you're waiting, if you're waiting, and if you're walking in God's timing, it's a blessing. It's a blessing to be able to walk that is in God's timing. This is God's timing. And when the story is told, somebody in this era will be able to tell their grandchildren about the pandemic and what it did and how it rearranged our lives. Somebody will be able to tell it because you're walking in God's timing. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, God is going to provide everything that we need. So you don't have to worry. He's going to take care of you. You understand? Somebody said that my God shall supply the belief that I have according to his riches in glory. Then we get to the following song. I mean, excuse me, Isaiah 40, 28 and 31. That says, I have that not good and have that not known. The creator of the ends of the earth, you understand? Faith not, neither are they weary. Believe it or not. You understand? These are the words of God, you understand. He gives the power to the faith, and to them that have no might, he gives the strength. Even to use your faith and grow weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, we got to know what it is to wait on God. You got to wait on your vaccine. You can't make one in your kitchen. You got to learn what it is to wait. If you wait, guess what? It's going to be a blessing to you. You got to wait on your ministry. Wait till God place you in the ministry. Getting in the ministry is not like walking in a restaurant and you see a sign that say wait to be seated. But you got to wait on God. You got to wait on God. You got to wait on your marriage partner. You got to stop running around claiming that you know everything that that your timing is best. But we got to know what it is to wait on the Lord and to walk in his timing. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. Your timing, your timing is not, it's not his timing. And did the end it all? He said that my ways are not like your ways. You understand? My thoughts are not your thoughts. As high as the heaven is above the earth. So is my ways different from you? You may think it's time. You may be having a hard time right now. You may be saying to yourself, you understand, if I come like God time, but look what I'm going through. I tell you what you do. Why don't you revamp and reminisce and look back at your life when God said to go left and you decided to do what? Go to the right. And you're suffering right now because you didn't listen. His ways is not like your way. If his ways and thoughts are not like your way, then his timing is not like yours. We need to think about this. This is the Christmas season, and we want to be in God's time. Amen. We want to think about a full crater, baby that was born in Bethlehem, you understand. And his father and mother, nobody, nobody, nobody gave attention to him. He even went to the hotel, and there was no any rooms or anything, you understand. But because of that baby, because of that baby, you understand, we have a right to the tree that is of life. And we thank God for that. Look at your time. What's going on right now in your life? You understand? What are you pushing? And you're trying to push it around God. You understand? I don't need for God to answer this. You understand? I know the answer. I'm going in and I, I'm not going to let anybody stop me from doing what I want to do. Then you're doing what you want to do. That is in your own time. Amen. God has been a good God. And we thank him. For this season. Remember now, walk in God's time. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We know we live in a microwave lifestyle. We want everything right now. But it's
still to wait, to wait on the Lord. Thank you for that word, Pastor, on today. That we need to wait. Our timing is not his timing. So we just want to be patient. Patient is hard to, to, to do, but there's reward in our waiting. Shall we be a great in prayer? Father, we bless you. And we thank you for that message on today. So our ways are not like your ways, and our time is not like your time. But if you wait on the Lord and be of good courage, then he will strengthen your heart. We ask you to continue to move by your spirit in this time and in this season. Lord, as we wait on a lot of things, and God, we don't run ahead, God. But God will continue to wait on you, Lord, to make the move. We thank you again for this word. We thank you for our pastor. God, we just ask you to continue to have your God like way in our lives. Bless us, Lord. Keep us, Lord, in the center of your will, Lord. We just continue to ask you to move in every way. Those that have gone on before us, Lord, have shown us what patience can be. Now we just ask you to bless. Have your way in this church. Bless everyone that's heard this word. We thank you for the listeners, Lord. That don't be encouraged from this word on today. God will give you praise, glory, and honor for all that you've done. All that you're going to do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you want to give to this ministry, uh, we ask you, Lord, you can send a letter. Uh, uh, put a check in the mail. 1741 Joseph Combo. Or God, uh, 48215. We also use Givenify if you want to send something. Thank you again for your listening. For those who have tuned in, and God, we ask you to bless. We ask you to be blessed in Jesus' name.